I think as human beings, everybody has a natural gift and a natural passion. It's March 31st, 2019. Essentially, it's a day like any other in Los Angeles. Nipsey Hussle is standing with friends in front of his own store in LA, the Marathon Clothing Store. An old acquaintance comes by and shakes hands with Nipsey and his guys. He talks to them normally, but before he joins the group, Nipsey asks himself something. I wonder how this will all unfold. After all, it's Eric Holder. Nipsey knew him from back in the day. They were both from the same gang, the Rolling Sixties Crips. According to statements by BG Knockout and LA rap legend, Eric Holder was part of Nipsey Hussle's label. If you watch old music videos, you can even see Eric Holder in the background. This means they definitely knew each other well. Apparently though, Eric Holder was kicked out of Nipsey Hussle's label because there were allegations against him. Allegations of having snitched. Yet nothing ever happened to Eric Holder. Nipsey didn't sick anyone on him and was respectful towards him. Contrary to media claims, Nipsey supposedly never really called him a snitch. According to Cowboy, a close homie of Nipsey Hussle, who was standing next to him on the day of this event and overheard this conversation, Nipsey said, There are documents against you. I haven't read them, but you should handle it. I believe this statement is true. Firstly, I see Nipsey as very respectful. Secondly, why would Cowboy lie? He was right there when Nipsey talked to Eric Holder. Moreover, nobody would hate Nipsey if he called Eric Holder a snitch. Eric Holder even responded to Nipsey's statement. He said, people just hate. Eric then went to get his food and the matter seemed settled. Nobody thought anything else would happen. They actually parted on good terms. The conversation and the subsequent act were all caught on video recordings. You can also see how Eric Holder gets his food and keeps looking in the direction of Nip and his friends. It seems like he was already planning what would happen next. Eric came back to Nipsey, this time from behind and armed with two loaded guns. He sneaked up and started shooting at the group. Nipsey fell to the ground and Eric intended to run away. But then he noticed that no one was shooting back and everyone was just running away. That's why he hesitated for a moment and then shot Nipsey again. Still, nothing happened. No one defended themselves and Nipsey lay helpless on the ground. So Eric went back to Nipsey and kicked him in the head again. Then Eric fled to the getaway car that was already waiting for him. Cowboy, who was in the break room of the store at the time, heard all the shots. He ran out and the only thing he saw was Nipsey on the ground and Eric running away. But it was too late for any help for Nipsey. He lay on the ground fighting for his life. According to Cowboy, he was trying to breathe the whole time and it was clear he was struggling. However, he later died in the hospital. By the way, two other people were also hit. Nipsey himself was shot more than 10 times. Most bullets hit his chest, his lungs, some even his head. It was quickly clear who was supposed to have committed this act. There were many witnesses and video recordings. Thus, Eric Holder was arrested on April 2, 2019. His bail was then set at $1 million and he couldn't pay it. He even offered DJ Vlad an interview for about $100,000-$200,000. But DJ Vlad declined, as he did not want to contribute to that bail. The court proceedings were postponed over and over again, and Eric Holder was in jail the whole time. But they have recently started, and Eric Holder was beaten so badly in jail that he couldn't appear in court. Nipsey was a person who uplifted many friends and many people along with him. He was also appreciated beyond music. Therefore, his death affected an incredible number of people. For instance, the game drove through LA crying at night. Barack Obama praised Nipsey's social work. The former president of Iran simply quoted his lyrics on Twitter. And DJ Ghost, one of the biggest reaction YouTubers, cried into the camera. These are just a few examples. I just wanted to show you that a wide range of people felt Nipsey's impact. Nipsey's memorial service was held at the Staples Center in LA. The last artist for whom something like this was done was Michael Jackson. These are all people and artists who have inspired countless individuals across the globe. And I think it really underscores the impact Nipsey had within the community. The funeral procession was 25 miles long, spanning across LA. The entire city mourned. Even the Bloods and the Crips came together after his death. The gang conflict in LA is still quite severe to this day, though the Bloods vs Crips situation has calmed somewhat. 
the tension between the two remains high, and they haven't united like this in decades. Not since after Nipsey's death, they wanted to find a joint solution to all the violence. The area where Nipsey was shot is a small shopping district. Since the shooting, it has been closed. The stores are shut, even the store that belonged to Nipsey Hustle, and I find it incredibly sad because many jobs were lost and possibly many hopes were dashed. I don't know why it's like this. The only thing I hope for is that some life comes back into the area and perhaps Nipsey's store will reopen. In the initial hours or days, it was thought that the whole act had a gang-related background because Nipsey was a part of the Rolling Sixties Crips. Now it's most likely clear that Eric Holder felt disrespected when Nipsey told him that many people believe he's a snitch. This was also claimed in the ongoing court trials. Boozy Badaz mentioned in an interview that Eric Holder let himself be provoked because his girlfriend took a photo with Nipsey. These are the plausible theories. They are currently being used in court. And yes, to me, they seem the most logical. As with any famous person who passes away, there are always wild theories post-mortem. I think you all know this. For the sake of completeness, I will now introduce you to the other two theories. Proponents of the first theory believe that Nipsey was shot by the government or the Illuminati simply because he wanted to make a documentary about Dr. Sebi. Dr. Sebi was a herbalist who claimed to cure diseases like cancer and AIDS. Nipsey had teased this documentary shortly before his death in an interview. Moreover, he mentioned that he believed he could be targeted because he was making this documentary. Why a target? Because a lot of money is made in the pharmaceutical industry. And Nipsey wanted to show people what he believed in and help them. Another theory claims that Big U was behind the murder. Big U was Nipsey's manager. There were frequent disputes between the two. At one point, a gun was even fired by Nipsey's brother. And according to rumors, Nipsey had fallen out with Big U. This means Big U would have lost one of his biggest money makers. Therefore, those who believe this theory claim that Big U set Eric Holder on Nipsey Hustle. Well, I'm not a big fan of these last two theories, but as I said, I just wanted to present them to you so you have a complete overview of the entire case. However, the fact is, this act once again proves that the worst haters come from your own circle. They come from your own hood. So many rappers are shot in their own home, their own neighborhood, simply because there are people who begrudge them. Look at Nipsey Hussle. The guy uplifted so many people. He opened several stores. His music went viral. He employed and lifted many people out of difficult situations. And yet, there were no well-wishers. And one of these people, without any reason, took his life. Nipsey Hussle was only 33 years old. His music still motivates thousands of people every day. His music stands for hustling. I listen to him every morning after waking up to stay motivated. Rest in peace, Nipsey Hussle.